So let's just jump into our discussion today. So pretty simple. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about time management and the, the conversation continues. So we will jump right into this. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. So let's talk about this, this idea of time and money. So there are some pillars of time management and we've talked a little bit about the, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. We spent a lot, we kind of did a deep dive on that on our last video. Um, we also talked about this idea of the theory of constraints and how that's effect, this affects your real estate business and the different parts of your life as well. So we've talked, covered both these pillars, but let's move into this conversation a little bit more. And let's talk a little bit about Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law is a pretty powerful one. And that is that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. So whatever amount of time that you give something to do or whatever amount of time that you have to be able to do something, that is exactly how much time it's going to take to do that thing. So think about in your life, all the different things that you have and all the different things that you want to do and whatever time you allocate to doing that thing, it will take you that much time to do it. So there's a story that I kind of think of that um, growing up, um, I had in college, I, went, 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 I had a roommate that I uh, was a good friend with. And on Fridays, we would reach out to him and say, hey, we got this like super fun like, weekend coming up. You should hang out with us. And he would come back and say, no, I got a big test on Monday morning. I got to focus on that. I'm, I'm focusing on my big test. And so we would go out Friday night, go see, do something fun. Maybe we go up to the canyon to have a bonfire. Maybe we'd go in the, uh, maybe we just, I don't know. We just have to get a group together and do something fun. And we would leave and he would decide to not come with us because he was going to stay back and get ready for his big test. And he'd come home or we would come home and he'd be sitting on the couch playing his guitar and we're like, Hey man, what are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm just getting ready for that big test. Saturday morning would roll around and we'd go off and do something fun. We'd go to the park and play some games or we'd go and do some sort of sporting event and we'd get together and he wouldn't come because he's got to get ready for his big test. The Saturday night would come rolling around and we'd have other plan plans and do other fun things and he would bail on that too and not come because he had the big test on Monday. Or had this big project he had to get done, turn it in on Monday, whatever the, whatever the excuse was. Then Sunday would roll around and then we'd be doing games and stuff on Sunday night and he would not participate. But then every single time, without fail, by 10 o'clock Sunday night, he would really lock in. And he would be up most of the night getting ready, whether studying or getting his project done, and he would have it ready for 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, or sorry, for Monday morning. He would be up all night, sometimes all night, sometimes multiple hours into the night, all that Sunday night, getting ready for Monday morning. He would always be ready for Monday morning, always. And what I think is interesting is, is that it took him all weekend to be ready, but in reality, did it take him all weekend to do the work? No, no, he just, he just knew he had all weekend to get it done. And how often in our lives do we work the same? Like we show up to the office and we have all day to do something. And so we take all day to do it. We have these projects that we want to get done and we've got all this time to do it. And so it's going to take us all this time to do it. So Parkinson's law is a pretty powerful one. And you start to really realize that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. So work will always take as much time as it's given. So if you really want to master time, then what you will start to do is you'll start to put different deadlines in place and you'll start to eliminate how much time you have to finish the things that are in front of you. You will put time restraints on it. You will start to put some, when you talk to this, like oh, it's concept of time blocking. It means that there's a start and a finish. Like the most powerful time blocking is the one that has a finish line to it. Like if you're going to be at the office, is there a stop time? Are there different things that you're going to be doing for different projects and give yourself a deadline around it? A, a deadline, like a line in the sand that you're going to have this done by this date. There's something about that. So for me, like, I mean, these, these, these uh, momentum calls are an example of that. I mean, I, I do these live every Monday morning. And I know that I have to be done by 9 a.m. Monday morning. Now, how much time does it take to do this? Well, whatever time I give myself. Sometimes it takes all weekend to put together the content. Sometimes I'm getting it together on Monday morning, but I know that I have a 9 a.m. deadline that I have to be done and ready to go. That is a clear time frame. Now, if I really want to master this idea of Parkinson's Law, I could put a deadline on myself 
at some point during the weekend, say, okay, I'm going to have this done during this time. And sometimes I do do that. Sometimes I have other things that are going on. I'll say, oh, I've got to have this thing done by this time. And it's always done by that time because that's the time frame I gave myself for it. And the question comes down to how much time do you, do you give to do things? Like, like how much window of time and, and are you giving too much time? Like are you giving too much in the sense of what it's going to take to do something? And what had happened if you started to com compress time? Now this is where you start to really make a difference in your business. But if you start to really compress time down, now we're talking about something that can make a huge, huge difference in your business. Because imagine if you worked with less time. How would that change the way that you work? Because the hardest part about real estate oftentimes is that it is freedom. There is no nine to five. There is no start. There is no finish until you put that in, in place. Now your clients will push the boundaries. Whenever you start to set boundaries and standards in your business, you have clients and potential clients who will push against that. But imagine if you worked less time. How would you work around that? And how would you show up differently if that was the case? So here's a little concept that we're going to dive down into something to like talk a little bit about this. Everyone else is playing by the same amount of time. Like that's the standard across the board. Like everybody's playing with 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, with seven days in a week, 30, 30 some odd days in a month. 365 days in a year. Like those are like standards of time that we all understand and we all accept. But what if you didn't play by those same rules? I mean, you got into real, real estate because you want to break rules anyway, in the sense that you want to like kind of break through the norms of a nine to five. So if you wanted to get into real estate, you want to push against the trends. Because I would say the people who are most successful in real estate oftentimes find whatever the masses are doing, they're going to do the opposite. The majority of real estate agents are not successful in the business. And if you want to be successful, then it's going to make more sense to do what the majority is not doing than to do what the majority is doing. In fact, it's one of a, on a side note, it's one of the most, most fascinating things about real estate is oftentimes real estate agents look to the masses for advice and they get advice from the masses, which is most likely advice that's not going to be getting them to where they want to go. If I go to a group of people who are not successful, and the majority, why would I want to then listen to the majority of voices? Because the majority of voices are going to give me the same result that they've gotten to them, which is non-success. But it's interesting, like how quickly like we succumb to following what the masses wants to do. So if you want to play by the rules and like follow the game of real estate in the sense that how, this is how time works, but what if you didn't? What if we pushed the envelope a little bit? Everyone has seven days in a week, right? Like, I mean, you have seven days in a week long period of time, which but that's makes sense. That's a, that's simple things you learn in elementary school, or maybe even earlier than that. There are seven days in a week, but what if you outlined what had to happen in a successful day? And what if you did that in half a day, then you did that again in the other half of the day. So just play with this idea for, for a second. If, if you were to tell me what it takes to be successful in real estate, or if we were to have a discussion around that, you would, you, we, could de we could determine core things that would be necessary to have a successful day in real estate. Now, I would say a successful day in real estate would require a minimum of one hour of conversations of, of, with people, whether they're follow-up conversations, with, whether they are outgoing um, relationship-building efforts, something on the proactive side that is creating connection that there's an effort being done on the, on the forward process to be able to create relationship capital. You are closing the gap and you are, you are depositing relationship capital into different accounts. And that is being done on a daily basis. So I would say that the minority of people are actually doing that. The minority of people in real estate actually do that on a consistent basis. So if that's the minority of people are doing that, how could you get even further ahead? Well, that would be if you started to double down on that. So imagine if you have an eight hour work day and if you're in on the eight hour work day, it was, it was required to do an hour worth of work, an hour worth of proactive outbound activities to be able to create the business that you need to create. Now, some people might do maybe two hours. So maybe an hour and a half, 90 minutes. I don't know what the number is. 
But what if you took a typical 24 hour day and you divide it up? And you try to look at it and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to treat my mornings. I'm going to treat my mornings from 8 a.m. till noon, that four hour block of time. I'm going to treat that four hour block of time and get done in that window of time what the masses, or I don't even know if the masses, I would say like if I would get done in that four hour block of time, what the successful people do in a whole day. And if you did that in only half a day, that gives you the afternoon that you could actually double up your day. Because now all of a sudden, now you are now working two days for every one day everybody else potentially is working. Now you're moving dramatically faster. Because if you were to do that, that means if you were to work, so if Monday you work from eight till noon, and during that eight hour, during that four hour block of time, you'd actually did an hour worth of proactive creation of business. Now you're already uh, above the standard of creating business for that day. And what if you actually did the same thing in the afternoon? What if you work, what if you work from eight to 12 and from 12 to one, you just kind of reset for the day. And then from one to four, one to five, it was another four hour block of time. And you actually did another hour worth of work between one to five that actually moved your business forward. It's an interesting concept to think about because now you're doing two a days. That means in the course of from Monday to Friday, you've actually worked 10 days. You've actually worked 10 days and everybody else has worked five. In the course of a, of a two week period of time, now you've actually worked 20 days and everybody else has worked 10. In three weeks, I mean, it's like crazy. We started to do the math on that. In three weeks, you know, you worked a whole month when everybody else is all like, you've already like, you've, you've just done more effort. And you just like, you just did a whole extra, you just changed the game because you're knocking things out faster. This concept came about when I started to think about, like, I watched a video of Kobe Bryant and Kobe Bryant talked about his summer routine. And he talked about how he would wake up at 4 a.m. and go work out in the morning and come home and get another workout in. And he was already like two workouts in by the time that the rest of the, anybody who's like working out in the summertime is like starting their day. He's already two workouts in. And then he's already like, so by the end of the day, when it's like this, the given day, he has doubled up the amount of workouts that he's done that day than the average eight. And I wouldn't even say the average. I would say that that's someone who's like, the average person probably they're doing hardly any effort. You know, the above average are the ones who are going above and beyond, but he's going above the above average. Like how different would your business be? How much faster could you create momentum if you started to play the game and you started to look at it saying, you know what? I'm going to treat my days as half days. I'm going to try every half day. I'm going to get done what a, a, a successful agent would do in a day. Like now you're playing a different set of rules because now you are playing a game at a higher capacity. At a higher level, maybe you would be able to take more time off now because you would be working so much more efficiently in the time when you're on the clock. So that's the concept around this. Now we'll jump into the next one, which is Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion is simply that objects in motion tend to stay in motion and objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So think of a snowball rolling down a hill. Like as it, as it starts to roll down a hill, it gains more and more momentum. As you start to like roll a rock down a hill, it creates more and more momentum as it's moving downhill. There is something to be said about just doing forward activities to move your business forward. The hardest amount of effort in anyone's real estate business is the beginning effort, is to move a business from zero to something. That's the most expense of effort going to be done is from moving it from nothing to something. You're going to expend a lot more. It's a lot less effort to keep something rolling that's already rolling along.